June 5th, 2016, was a day that started like any other until the phone rang and on the other end of the line, we were met with a message from my daughter delivering devastating news. Just four days after graduating from high school, my 17-year-old son suffered from a ruptured brain aneurysm. The doctors gave us just a 10 to 15% chance of survival, warning us that even if he did pull through, he may never fully recover. After hearing this prognosis, I invited my entire family into the room, and I informed them all, if there's anybody in this room that does not know that my child is going to get up and walk out of this hospital, I need you to leave the hospital now because I can't have your energy interfering with my energy. I can't have your thoughts interfering with mine. The reality for me was that I knew that our vibes speak louder than our words. I instructed them that we would set a clear intention of healing and total recovery and match that with an elevated emotion. I instructed them to come together and elevate their energetic frequency, and we went to work. We set a clear intention with an elevated emotion, and I invited them all to grab hands and join me in what I call vibrational prayer. We are all energy, and I believe in energy. And we had to believe. I told them to hell hands, and we started the movement of energy. And we started at the bottom of our feet. And we moved that energy from our feet to our knees, from our knees to our hips, from our hips to our chest, chest to our heads. And when we got to the top of our heads, we transmitted that energy out to wherever my child was lying in the hospital. My family's collective frequency was tuned into the power of healing energy. And we reverberated that energy out to wherever my child was laying in the hospital every moment we were there. After 37 days in the hospital, including 21 days in ICU, my son finally came home. We relocated to Atlanta for two months for his initial rehab and then we returned home for the remainder of his rehabilitation. Against all odds, my son defied expectations, and he became just victorious in his efforts. It was a miraculous recovery that left us all in awe of the power of healing and grace and the resilience of the human spirit. Today, my son is, is thriving as a senior at the University of South Carolina. A true testament to clear intentions and elevated emotions. Now, it would have been easy for us to feel sorry for ourselves. It would have been expected that we would have been down. But our family chose not to be negative not to allow our fears and our, our, our challenges and our emotions keep us in a place of despair, uncertainty, and fear. We had a decision to make, and we chose to transcend our limitations and create a vision that defied our current circumstances. It all starts with energy. We are all energy. And here's the thing. Emotions are energy in motion. So you say, well, Karen, how did y'all do that? Here's the T. Our thoughts create our emotions, which lead us to make an action. And then that action creates us to have another thought, which results in another emotion, which results in another action. And the cycle continues. But what if we could intercede that process and create a new future? You know, as humans, we tend to focus on the challenges that we face. We tend to focus on the things that we don't want, like bills, you know, negative relationships. Some of you have problems on the job. And when we focus on those things, they tend to give us more of the same. Instead of focusing on the things that we do want, 
we have to be intentional about where we are. So let me tell you about my friend Mary. Mary got up one morning and stubbed her toe and came out with a lot of expletives. You can imagine what came out of her mouth. Well, her day didn't get any better because she ended up spilling coffee on her blouse on her way to work, got you know, delayed by a passing train. And while she was sitting on that passing train, she heard this hissing sound. Oh, no. It couldn't be, she thought. Yes, it was the sound of her tire going flat. Well, why has this happened to me again, Mary thought. Mary was able to make it to the nearby gas station and call for assistance. And while she was there, she walked inside to try to get the spot out of her blouse. And as she entered, she was met by the attendant with a rude growl. And she's like, why? Why is this happening to me? Like, this is a day from you know where. So Mary made it back to the car, waiting on the assistance. And while she was there, she decided, she kind of went back through the process of replaying the morning and the events that she went through. And it hit her all of a sudden that the rude growl that she had received from the attendant was actually a response from her and the energy that she brought into the room. Without realizing it, Mary had growled at her first. So how many times have we carried negative energy and broadcast it without even knowing it and then projected it onto an innocent bystander? We all do it. We had a problem at work. We come home not realizing we're carrying that energy and we bite our significant other's head off. I'm not talking to everybody in here, just a few of you. <laughs> Something else happens to you like Mary and you don't realize that you're carrying that negative energy. We have to use our energy for our benefit, not our problem. We have to focus on our desired outcomes and not on our current circumstances. Had we focused on our current circumstances with my son, he would not be here today. We had to create a vision beyond our circumstances and realize that if we match that vision with an elevated emotion, we can make some things happen. So I ask you, what vision can you imagine today? And then when you have that vision of whatever it is, what emotion will go along with that vision? Would it be happiness, joy, excitement? And if that's the case, then I want you to bring that emotion forward and sit in it with that clear vision and intention and act as if it is already so. Sometimes they used to tell you, you have to fake it till you make it. This is the real fake it till you make it because you will attract what you focus on. Where the mind goes, energy flows. So we have to be responsible for the energy that we bring into the room. And the next time, or actually when you leave here, you need to be aware of the energy that you carry and the emotions that go along with that. And it's not always easy because we tend to focus on the bad things and I'm here to tell you that your thoughts today are previews to common attractions in your life. So I would suggest that we all need to be a little careful about what we're focusing on. Instead of focusing on the challenge, focus on the desired outcome. Instead of focusing on the challenge, focus on your vision and match that with an elevated emotion. Through it all, I realize that the challenges that we faced with my son were an opportunity for us to leverage our energy by aligning our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions with our desired outcome. Through adversity, we learned and discovered our strength, our resilience, and the depth of our faith. And I'm here to tell you that although we all may be facing challenges, that if we begin to focus on the outcome, the results that we want, instead of focusing on the current circumstances, we can transcend our situation, elevate our vibrational frequency, and create a future beyond our wildest dreams, if we can only imagine. Thank you.